Hello again. Welcome to Ecology Class one more. Uh, today we will talk about ecoregions and ecozones. This is the first time in this chapter we will directly talk about biogeography, even though I named the whole chapter by it, but all the presentations will definitely be correlated with the topic. And we already mentioned uh, these ecoregions and ecozones in some of the first presentations in this ecology class, but only briefly and today we will talk in more detail on what ecoregions and ecozones are and what is their purpose so firstly um we define ecoregions as a relatively large um, unit of land on or water um, containing geographic clear composition of species natural communities and environmental conditions so basically, ecosystems within a single ecoregion have uh, have certain common characteristics. And just to mention that ecoregions are also known as biomes. Uh, in the beginning of, let's say, 80s of 20th century, um, tendency to map ecoregions of the world arise and since it is in development. Um, several standard methods of classification of ecoregions is elaborated since um, taking, for example, climate, altitude, and then the dominant type of vegetation is some of the important criteria for your classification. And the Vita Kero, whose system is still most used, classified biomes using two abiotic factors, so precipitation and temperature. Vita Kero's parameters for classifying biomes would be intertidal levels, climatic moisture gradient, temperature gradient, by altitude and by latitude. So altogether, ecoregions or biomes are area with similar climate and species assemblage. So for example, deserts, tundra, taiga, rainforest, they have similar climate and, and species assemblage altogether. Now on ecozones, they are basically a method of dividing Earth's surface into areas which are linked by the evolutionary history of animals and plants within them. That's really important. So evolutionary history is specifics of ecozones. Delineated, they are delineating large areas of Earth's surface within which organisms have been evolving in a relatively isolated over a long period of time. For example, separated from one another by geographical features as oceans or deserts or mountain ridges. So something that basically is representing a barrier to migration and mixing different populations within an area. As such, ecozones designation are used to indicate general grouping of organisms based on their shared biogeography. Ecozones correspond to the floristic kingdom or botany, and on the other hand, zoographic regions or zoology. So biogeography can be zoogeography or geography. So just to be clear, each zone, eco zone, can contain number of different biomes. So some biomes may seem similar, but they're inhabited and may have very different evolution path. And that is something that ecozones are grouping. For example, climate is similar in South Africa and South America, but their species assemblage is really different due to their isolation by by the huge ocean and the evolution were developing differently because of that barrier science which deals with all these problems like why are different parts of the earth characterized by different types of living beings in their communities or how related plants and animal species ended up on different continents and are separated by large oceans that science is called biogeography. Important to mention in this point is the process called tectonic plate movement and this is a process which was the main driver of today's patterns of distribution of living organisms of the world's ocean. So I don't know if you heard about it but on image here on GIF you can see how it looked like. So at the beginning it was one huge continent called Pangea. There are really nice videos on this on YouTube. If you're more interested, you can go through them. But basically the whole continents drift apart during the whole evolution of Earth. And that's how, for example, similar life forms ended up on different continents 
or why during the separate evolution in different continents different life forms develop and here how it looks to, like today so each continent basically is a one tectonic plate and how they are connected today so about the ecozones that are used today and correlated with this tectonic plate movement the most fresh division is made recently by world wildlife foundation and it separated uh, earth on eight main ecozones if you go through old books you can find some other divisions <clears throat> but with the today we will use this one that is mostly you you seen on on internet or maybe wikipedia as well so by this division there are eight main um, ecozones on earth so we have a palearctic which would be north part of asia and europe then we have nearctic which would be north america and this area sometimes are seen as one or called whole arctic so nearctic plus palearctic uh, because of their similarities in evolution, but we'll talk about that more when we reach that ecozone in detail. Then we have Afrotropic, that would be sub Sahara area and one part of Little Asia continent, subcontinent. Then we have Australasia, this is a part with Australia, uh, New Zealand, and New Guinea as well and some other little archipelagos around it. Neotropic would be area of uh, South America and Central America, taking a bit of uh, Mexico part here, just a tiny part of North America, of course, the archipelago here of Cuba and the rest. And in the Malaya, which would be considering India some continent, Southeast Asia and China hold this part. There is also Antarctic region, including Antarctica, which is not on this, on this picture, as well as Oceania, including Polynesia, except New Zealand, Micronesia, and uh, Fiji Island. And they are not on this picture as well. I would just like to stress that some differences on these divisions can appear comparing floristic and fauna logic. So some areas will be more interesting for faunal research, other will have special meaning for floral and so on. And also these generally accepted divisions is relatively new as I mentioned, but it is basically taken from Floristic Kingdom division. Thus, through the next presentations, I will mention all the names used in ge zoogeography, just also to mention that in most of the literature as I told you before, you can run into this old division of geography. And in this picture, you can see these old names from for the same area. For example, it wasn't called Afrotropic, but it was called Ethiopic area. This was called Orientalis. New Zealand, part of another Antarctica region, and, and so on. So when we start talking about ecozones in details, we will talk only about six most important ones, the ones you can actually see on these two maps. But before we start talking about ecozones individually, in the next two presentations, there are some expressions used in biogeography that you've probably met so far, but just to be clear, you understand them so you can be able to understand everything that biogeography has to offer. So, areal or geographic range or of habitat and the ecologists like to discuss on what areal really is because it is a consequence of different happenings in the surrounding and then response to biotic and abiotic factors to it. Basically it represents adaptations to change in the environment looking for an optimal place for life and so on. But the main idea states that areal is geographic range of a habitat. Endemic would be a taxon limited to some part of the planet. It is mainly used for taxa that occupy a very small area, so it's endemic in a narrow sense. Thus, it means you can find them, that species, for example, only at that one place and nowhere else in the world. For example, islands are usually very rich in endemism because of their isolation and separate evolution, so physical separation of the rest of the evolving world. Uh, then relict, 
It's taxa that is present today, but with great geological age. Uh, basically, they developed as a tax a long, long time ago, but they are today still pretty much uh, the same as they were, and they are still present and alive. And then on your hand you have fossils. Fossils represent the trace of a stink tax in geological layers. Of course, you don't know for, for fossils like dinosaur fossils, for example. Then a refugium. Refugium would be a habitat protected from the effects of the adverse environment conditions in the past in which relic species found refugee. So, for example, in the Ice Age, there were areas that were protected from the surrounding ice or snow or low temperature, and then species from all the surrounding just migrate to that one area, and they waited there to the Ice Age to end, and they, through that time, they had certain adaptations to the new environment, a bit of evolution, and so on, and when the Ice Age finished, from that area having a shared evolution, they spread around and they continued their evolution in different areas. For example, Balkan Peninsula was um, in Europe, it was a big refugee how for uh, animal species, the same way for plant species, because they, even though they're apparently not able to, to move, but they still had a movement in a long period of time, basically escaping from cold weather and reaching for the area they are used to before the ice age moving all the way to, to for example from the whole Europe to Balkan Peninsula and that's why even though uh, climate is changed you still have some species that in uh, some theory shouldn't be in that area but they are they are relict so they're they came there at the time of ice age and they never moved back then we have uh, something that's called sympathy, it would be aerial overlapping of two species and uh, allopathy, the aerial separation of two different species, so they are not, their areals are not in the contact in any way. Okay, so as I said in the next two presentations, we will start to talk about each ecozone in more concrete and till then Stay tuned with Edupedia. Thank you for listening. My name is Divna. See ya. Ciao.